who's taking the lead in your family? In my family, it was definitely my mom. In many families, I think it often is mom where there's a loved one with a developmental disability. But I wanna offer you maybe a different perspective today. And I know you moms out there, people, family members that are in that lead role, maybe it's dad, maybe it's a sibling, it can feel really tiring and exhausting and you want your loved one to gain more independence. So I wanna offer you tip number four from the 12 top secret independence tips guide. If you haven't got your copy yet, there's a link below. You can go ahead and get your free copy. Okay, so tip number four comes from section number two, which is all about working with your loved one to grow, right? Tip number four is to let your loved one lead. So you might be asking this question, how do we start supporting our loved one to grow their independence? So, um, you know, I asked thousands of families the question of what is the number one strategy that's helping you to support your loved one to grow their independence? So Karen H. Mother says, our number one independence strategy is to start skill building with something that relates to something our son wants to achieve and then try to generalize it. Okay, so I often see parents and caregivers selecting the starting point, right? Making all the decisions, taking that lead. And for example, like my loved one is going to learn to keep their room clean, right? And, and it's someone else deciding that. Maybe it's you deciding that. And when you keep telling your loved one, right, they're going to keep their, lo their room clean, I'm guessing there's resistance. So the insight here from Karen is to start with something your loved one wants. For example, it could be making their favorite lunch meal, right? And then, you know, you want to think about, you're trying to think about that starting point, okay? So it's not like you're going to say, you know, I've been taking the lead on everything now. You need to take the lead on everything. You want to find that starting point. So what is that interest point? And how do you find that? How do you find that? Well, you might have some intuition around what your loved one um is interested in, right? So I want you to think about that in advance before going in, having a conversation or approaching your loved one. And the best way that you know how, because that can look different amongst uh, our loved ones, depending on how they communicate and have those in your back pocket, right? And I'll call those, I call those win-win ideas. I'm not gonna go too much deeper into, into that right now, but then you wanna maybe ask your loved one, like, how would you, uh, how would you like to maybe help out a little bit more around the house? Because I'm super stressed. I'm super busy. I need some support. What's one way that you could help, right? And maybe your loved one come up, comes up with an idea on their own. If they don't, then maybe you bring those one or two ideas. It could be the favorite lunch, or it could be keeping your room clean or designing your room the way that you want it, whatever it is, right? You know your loved one best, but it's making that shift to you taking the lead to shifting your loved one into the lead, giving your loved one control and agency, okay? And that's been super helpful, that shift for parents um, and caregivers to support their loved one to gain more independence. And it's created a ton of growth in, in uh, families that, uh, that I support. So I hope that tip is helpful for you. Again, you can read more in the 12 Top Secret Independence Tips Guide. If you haven't got it yet, click below, get your copy. Um, it'll be emailed directly to you. I'm Eric Gall. Together, let's take a small step forward.